Hi, I'm Adam from Michigan Avionics, and today we're going to have a uh, brief discussion on how to set up your V16 for audio panels. Uh, with the A16 uh, coming into popularity since we started bringing it to the U.S., uh, as well as uh, other audio panels in, um, in retrofit installations where somebody's replacing an old radio, uh, we've had a couple of uh, pattern uh, things that we've noticed that weren't quite clear in the manual. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and fill in those blanks for you guys right now and uh, hopefully help you out if you're doing an installation like this. So we're getting our uh, equipment set up here. So what we've got is a uh, V16 to A16 harness and then we've got our uh, Razor and Vega control head harness. Uh, we're just connecting those with uh, quick connect CAN bus plugs. We're going to put the terminator on one end um, and then we just give it some power and ground and we're already ready to go with the, uh, the basic setup here. Um, enough to at least get us going to look at the settings on this uh, on this head unit. Number one issue that we're finding is um, customers are not turning off the Vox system in this V16. Uh, so for those who don't know what the Vox system is doing, it acts as a noise cancellation. So for one, it's squelch like you would be used to on some audio panels where you would adjust it to the point that uh, you can no longer hear your voice or you can just start to hear your voice if you speak at a normal volume. Um, but it gets rid of the engine noise or you know environmental noise around your aircraft. Our system combines that with uh, another system called Vogan, where it compares uh, the audio that's coming into the microphone channel um, and looks for patterns, and then it eliminates those patterns. So in a way, it's kind of like noise canceling uh, on your headset. Thing is, though, is our A16 audio panel has it. Most audio panels slash intercoms out there in the world have some type of that system. Uh, so the only time that this system is even coming into play is during transmission. And it doesn't make sense to have that on transmission because your mic's audio is already being noise canceled some way or another. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and turn that off. To accomplish that, we go to our control head here. You go to menu, and the Vega is gonna be similar, not quite exactly the same as far as the steps to take, but the uh, selections will be the same. Uh, we'll go to setup com. Uh, and this one here, you can actually see Vox is disabled. Uh, that's because I set up a switch input to go ahead and um, set our discrete input instead of being a playback button to being an ICS button. And that's one way uh, to accomplish this task. The other way is uh, I'll go ahead and reset it back to its uh, default. You can see right here the Vox level says 10. So if we just turn that down all the way to bypass, it does the same exact thing. Uh, the next setting that's going to be important here is the uh, microphone gain setting. Once you get your intercom tuned in, again, whether it be an MGL intercom, the A16, or whether it be a third-party intercom, um, what you're going to want to do is then set the mic gain on the radio so that your transmitted audio uh, is not so loud that it's being distorted, but also not so quiet that it can't be heard by ATC. Um, typically speaking, the transmitted audio coming from the radio should be approximately the same as what you're hearing in the intercom. Uh, in most cases, if you were using, for example, just the V16 as the intercom, you would actually have uh, a positive mic gain in most cases. But because intercoms and audio panels amplify your voice already, you would actually have a negative gain when you're interfaced to one of those with the V16. So on here on the razor head, you can see we've got pilot mic gain set. Right now it's currently at the default setting of plus zero, so it's not being amplified or attenuated in any way. Uh, typically speaking, you would want to have a starting point of about negative two uh, decibels, or the closest that it gets to is negative two and a quarter. Uh, again, that's a good starting point. There's some more fine tuning that you will probably have to do there. Um, but for most people, this is what works. Uh, if you're in an open cockpit aircraft, you'll probably find this to be different. One final thing to look at is the auxiliary inputs of the V16. Because you're using an intercom or an audio panel, they have their own auxiliary inputs for things like uh, music or alert audio from like an EFIS or a stall warning device, what have you. Um, so make sure that your auxiliary input is off. Uh, sometimes, you know, at its... Uh, at the default level, it actually sits at negative 12. Um, by turning it off, we get rid of the chance of any interference coming in through that radio um, from an unused input channel. One final thing to consider on the uh, V16 is that the intercom volume, even though you're not using the intercom built in, has an effect on side tone. Uh, so probably the second most popular complaint that we get 
is that I can't hear myself when I'm transmitting. Simply turn the intercom volume up on the V16 about halfway and you'll have good side tone for all of your transmissions. Thanks for watching this quick tip. Uh, if you have any further questions about interfacing your V16 to your audio panel, please feel free to use our support system at support.michiganavionics.com. You can check the knowledge base for any entries that might uh, pertain to the particular issue that you're having. Uh, worst case scenario, you can submit a support ticket. We're going to be doing these videos um, every other week. Um, we're also going to be following these up with a live feed. Uh, so if you'd like to ask questions live uh, for us to answer on camera, uh, that'd be a great opportunity to do so. We'd love to uh, communicate with our customers. Until next time, again, I'm Adam with Michigan Avionics, and we look forward to seeing you soon.